Why is it a family rule not to dance? I don't think it's necessarily a rule. It's a personal conviction um, that I have, and I know Jim Bob also has that. And we try not to shake body parts around to draw attention to our bodies. We don't want to stir up desires, different things that um, cannot be righteously fulfilled, that cannot be, I don't know. So anyways, our family has chosen not to dance. <laughs>
attention to our bodies. We don't want to stir up desires, different things that um, cannot be righteously fulfilled that cannot be if you don't want to draw attention to your bodies that's what jim bob would say like we don't want to gyrate our body and draw attention to them and uh, get people to be defrauded and uh, it's a personal conviction to not stir up desires but the truth is is that bill gothard is not a dancer and he doesn't like dancing and he believes that listening to rock music that has a beat and doesn't have the right melody can actually be demonic and satanic and he also just thinks that any level of moving your body in a sensual manner could potentially cause someone to stumble and you don't want someone to stumble or be defrauded they believe that dancing can lead to other things but they also believe that the music is satanic so it's like sort of this double double whammy now southern baptists in general are not uh, they're like, if you remember Footloose, that was like deep Bible Belt South. That was good Southern Baptists, old Southern Baptists, IFB. A lot of IFB Southern Baptists back in the day were all against dancing. Some of these groups have loosened up their beliefs around dancing. But like in the 1980s, when I was a kid, I specifically remember the Baptists being very anti-dancing. So to see them dancing now, I was like, well, this is interesting. Jim, Bob and Michelle still are not dancers. They still not believe in dancing. They still are not dancing at all with their kids. They, they left the event when the dancing began. So Jim, Bob and Michelle and Anna and their friends apparently didn't want to be there when the music was playing, with the dancing was going on, according to the source that was at the event. But then when the music was going, the kids got all involved and the pictures don't lie. Here's what I like to see about this is a few things. One, the Duggars had this belief and this plan to create a world where their kids would all come back to their property and build on the 20 acres. And they had enough acreage that each person could have one acre and they could just live together in harmony and have this like commune of the Duggars. Well, not many of the Duggars actually live on the property. In fact, I think only Anna does. I think Joe and Kendra still live in the, in the log house that's like either adjacent to the property or near the property, but overall, the rest of the kids don't that are married live on the property. They've sort of found their own places to live outside of the Duggars compound. So Jim Bob had hoped and Michelle had hoped that the kids would, you know, take what they've learned and apply it to their lives and adhere to those rules. And throughout the years, Jim Bob has been very careful to ensure that his kids stayed in line, right? And they, they didn't deviate from those rules, those strict rules in which they grew up in. So when the show was on the air, we would have never seen a lot of the girls wearing pants. We did see, you know, Jill, she was wearing pants while the show was still on. And you would catch a, a shot here and there of Jessa wearing pants. But notably, since the show has gone off the air. Jessa wears pants all the time now, even ripped jeans. And Joy wears pants all the time. You see Abby in pants. Abby actually wore pants on the show. And Katie wears pants, which is Jed's wife. So the, the some of the traditions are just not being followed in the newer generation, and they're becoming a little bit more progressive. Uh, I was actually speaking to a source today who was telling me that, you know, some of the kids have older kids have really loosened up in terms of what they allow in their own homes and what their own beliefs are and they're not as strict as the Duggars and they've sort of broadened their horizons and they have friends that are not necessarily in the IBLP and they sort of do different things that they would have never done as children. So Jim Bob is just not being able to sort of control the kids in the same way that he did. With the show gone, he doesn't have the same hefty weight of you know keeping them complicit and complacent because they had to do what was best for the show with that gone i think there's a lot more freedom for the kids to be who they want to be and show you who they are and jim bob doesn't really have the ability to control it as well and so when i was talking to my source today i said you know the the duggars are you know they're not there they're not watching they're completely you know you know that they wouldn't be approval approving of this and the source just said to me, like, Jim Bob in many ways has lost a lot of control. And the conviction with Josh has completely 
they believe blindsided the Duggars. I think they were not prepared for him to actually be found guilty. I think up until the conviction, the Duggars believed that he would get out of it. And the fact that he is now going to be going to sentencing in 19 days, you know, they are shell-shocked. That's what my source said. The Duggars are absolutely shell-shocked by what happened. They didn't anticipate this happening. D Jim had spent so many years of getting sort of Josh out of this kind of stuff. And to, so to have this happen, they just weren't anticipating it. And they don't know what their next move is right now. So they're kind of laying low in the opinion of my source to as they wait to see what happens with the sentencing. And as equally shell-shocked as the Duggars were with the conviction, so were the kids. Like for the, going into the trial, a lot of the siblings wholeheartedly believed Josh when he said that he wasn't guilty and wholeheartedly believed Josh when he said that he was set up and that it was the shady ex-con and wholeheartedly bought into these conspiracies. And then a lot of those same siblings went to the trial and heard the evidence and knew that they could not stand by their brother anymore and knew that their brother had lied to them and knew that their brother had done this because there was so much evidence proving that he was guilty. So when the kids made that decision and decided about, you know, Josh is guilty, that was an awakening for many of them in that they kind of realized that they'd been lied to. Now, that doesn't mean that the family completely fractures and that they don't love their parents. I think it's just made some of these kids realize there's a whole lot out there that they haven't even explored. And there's all these different, you know, things that they've not done because of what their parents have said that there could be this awakening in that, hey, they said us, they told us not to do all of these things and Josh still got in trouble. Why don't we just try it, right? So if they danced, did they go to hell the next day? Did the the did the did Satan come and grab them and take them down to this burning gates of hell and tell them that the demons were coming? Did it change their hearts? Did it cause them uh, the persons around them to stumble and get into debauchery and to sin? No, they learned that dancing was fun and they had a blast and they were laughing and they were enjoying themselves and they had a good time. They were free. Now, listen, the Duggars that are there, which were the, you know, Joy and Abby and Katie and Jed and John, they, they're still fundamentalist Baptists. They're still conservative Baptists. They're just not as conservative as their parents. And with each generation moving, you're going to see more and more kids becoming more and more normal or mainstream. It's an interesting phenomenon to watch this and personally, I like to see it. I don't expect them to change their points of view on a lot. I don't expect them to realize that everything mom and dad told us was a lie or the IBLP is a cult or any of that. I don't think I expect them to change their philosophical views or their political views, but I see every little step that they take into being more like the rest of us, a good thing. They were kept away from all of this as kids because it was Satan. And really, their Satan was in their home. It was Josh. It was those rules that protected people like Josh, that helped enable people like Josh, and a father and a mother that protected that, that actually was more satanic than the dancing. Think about that. So Joy had a blast, Abby had a blast, and all of their fun friends had a blast. And apparently some of their friends are sticking by them and is supporting them as they walk through and sort of find their own ways outside of Jim Bob's control. And Jim Bob has so much going on right now with Josh and the sentencing and now having to take care of Anna and the kids there's just not as much time to tightly control everyone. And now that the show is gone, the narrative to control the narrative is no longer an issue because it's out. You can't hide it anymore. It's kind of amazing what happens when this happens. Like it's a, it's not good what Josh did, but the fact that Josh was convicted, I think is going to end up saving some of his siblings. And that to me is the silver lining in all of this. And it also will save his kids from being around him for years.
So even though what Josh did was horrific, even though what the, the Duggars did to help protect Josh is horrible, there is a light at the end of this tunnel. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye guys.